Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Dell Latitude 7470. I've already reviewed quite a bunch of Latitude devices by now, but I can confidently say that this one is by far my most favorite and throughout the whole review I will let you know why exactly that is. And just so we are clear, this is a business device. But even for someone like me who's not a businessman, I can see a lot of benefit in using it in my normal use as well. So what I will do now is give you an overview and then go into a little bit more of the specifics and then we will end this review with the conclusion. But as for right now, let's start off with the design and build quality. With 1.74 kilograms, it is still absolutely fine in terms of weight for a 14 inch quite thin as well, absolutely no problems here. It feels very sturdy, very substantial and actually quite premium. The keyboard is absolutely top notch. The trackpad maybe is just maybe slightly above average, but still okay. If we go into the display, absolute flagship level. This one could be even used in even more so higher end devices because it does an overall absolutely fantastic job. The speakers for a business device are actually surprisingly good. I did not expect normal speakers just for a business laptop to sound actually that good because usually the Latitude speakers didn't sound that good. Performance absolutely capable for all business task use. Of course you could also play maybe games and do some video editing but that's not what it is so much suited for because it's not meant to be for that. But other than really fast, fast SSD and really really capable. If you talk about the battery life, absolutely nice. I would say somewhere at around decent to actually good. I've seen better ones, but I've also seen quite a bunch of worse ones. So still quite solid. In terms of heat and noise, heat is not a huge issue. It gets a little bit warm, but it does also throttle a little bit. And that's maybe also the reason why the noise levels are that great. Because in normal use, absolutely silent and even a higher end load already, it still manages to be quite subtle. So if you plan on longer term heavier load, then it could throttle and things could get slower. And other than that, in terms of software, all done fine here. We have a few nice additions like the Dell audio software settings and so on. But other than that, there is a little bit of Dell bloat, but that's all fine. So I am done with the recap or the overview. You can jump now to the conclusion or stay with me and watch now the detailed part which we will start off again with the design and build quality and as you can already see on the top we have quite a few of smudges and fingerprints so this is definitely not that well done because the older versions have this had this black soft touch code and it definitely looked already nicer that feel a little bit nicer and just made a little bit of a better appearance so not quite so sure if this one is the better way to go for other than that on the back we have really solid plastic it almost doesn't bend at all as you can see on the really heavy pressing it gets a little bit of bending but this is still very solid there are plastic feet which i would still wish for to be rubber feet because it still slides quite easily on the table as you can see here and in terms of size we can compare it really quick with a macbook 13 inch you can see it's not that much bigger we are talking about the bigger device as well with 14 inches in terms of thickness there is maybe a bigger difference but this is meant to be a business device, so it is a little bit more on the sturdy side and therefore maybe a little bit bigger. So absolutely still fine with me. All good done here. On the back we have a little bit more ports for the ventilation. The docking port, if you want to use that instead of maybe the newer USB ones. Also here the Kensington lock. Here we have a few more ports for the ventilation. SC card reader. On the front top we have dual front firing butter facing speakers. They work actually quite nice. Here we have the headphone jack. SD card reader, the whole SD fits in, really, really nice, USB 3.0 and the SIM card tray. But the great thing here on the Latitude devices, we have ports on the back. Gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI display port. Here we have two more USB 3.0 and the port for the charging. So what I really like is we have a great amount of ports and all of them really placed smartly because towards the back, if you want to use it more as of a desktop replacement. So all good here. Let's open it up and see what we've got. By the way, on the front there are also a few status LEDs, but I didn't really have that much use for that. Here we can see already the fingerprint reader that kind of is a bad, bad hit and miss. Because sometimes, as you can see here, just nothing happens and sometimes it works. So I'm not quite so sure about that. The keyboard though is an absolute highlight because we have a great key travel. Everything is super, super subtly done. Really, really nicely done. And I actually have to log in. Let's use the pin. And I can already tell you that I really like this one. Let's actually turn off the lights so you can see the backlight. It is really, really even, really, really nicely done. You have two steps, but already the first one is really, really bright. So no complaints here. I absolutely like the... 
as you can hear super quiet and subtle really softly dampened keyboard that makes typing just a really big enjoyment really really nice and done the trackpad maybe not that great i just don't like it as well because it can be a little bit sticky from time to time i would definitely wish for uh, one of those glass pads that we have on maybe the xps 13 in terms of one finger precision it's nice but the moment you use more fingers and all that and especially for scrolling it works a little bit odd because i can show you this off the scrolling in my opinion behaves a little bit odd just a little bit as you can see jumpy and sometimes it's continues to scroll I'm just not that happy with the scrolling behavior, which maybe is a little bit a thing of the app or the drivers and so on. Other than that, the buttons, subtle as well. We also have the fingerprint here or the finger pointer. So if you want to make use of that, it is possible and it works, but it's not nearly as great as the keyboard is. Okay, now let's get into the display. We have a Quad HD glossy touchscreen display and this for me is an absolute highlight and i can try to zoom in a little bit closer so you can see that a little bit more up close and i really really like this because i think it's a really smart decision and i already asked dell why they don't have more of this qhd displays and they just say that it's quite hard to get them in the number or amount that they need and i definitely prefer in this one because i like glossy because of a lot of few benefits one is the sharpness and the great color vibrancy and all that. And as you can see, it is super sharp QHD. There's no need for 2K, but it's definitely noticeably better than 1080p. And the scaling and resolution all works fine because it was 200% out of the box. I switched down to 150 words, which was really nice. So all good here. The white point, absolutely fine. No complaints here at all. Black levels are good, but I will turn off the light once again. So you can maybe see the light bleed in the, right or up, in the upper right corner and also on the bottom. So there is a little bit of light bleed here and a little bit of light bleed here, but nothing that really concerned me in normal use, so all good here. The touchscreen itself works really, really nice. Maximum brightness, if we turn that fully, as you can see, it is really, really bright and should maybe be quite enough, good enough for outdoor use. The lowest setting maybe isn't super dim, as you can see, that is still quite okay, but I could use this already at 40% and up, like 40-50%, I never needed to go higher indoors, which is absolutely nice to see because usually I have to, and the maximum brightness is top-notch, colors are also really perfectly balanced. They are very vibrant, very vivid, but still absolutely accurate, even though they shouldn't even need to be on a device like this. So I'm super happy with the display. So let's check the sound now and see what we've got here. If you've seen one of my hands-on videos, you already know that I really like the sound because it's actually quite solid for a business device. And if we go actually into the software here, let's see what we have in terms of Dell Audio software. Because I think this one does a good job because we have Max Audio Pro and you can adjust settings like Max Bass, Max Treble and Dialog. If you have some more lower end quality, I noticed definitely one thing, it starts to distort a little bit. Not quite so sure why that is, so I definitely because I watch a lot of YouTube videos and so on, which don't have the best out, I turned these off. So then the audio got definitely more acceptable, but definitely loud enough. I was really pleased with that. And especially if you have maybe a movie that is not that loud and you use it on on VLC player, you can just go to 150%, 160% of volume and it will get a lot better. So sound, absolutely fine. I didn't actually expect business device to be that good. Now about the performance, if we check the SSD values here, we are, at 536 of read speeds and about 300 of write speeds. Absolutely fine, not super high and not the NVMe standards, which go like double or three times the speed, but absolutely fine. Now let's get into a little bit of a scrolling test here with the touch screen. Here we are in the Edge browser. And as you can already see, super battery smooth. And of course, all the universal apps will perform exactly as good as this one. As you can see, Chrome, maybe not quite as super fluid and it has a little bit more friction, so we will have to flick a little bit faster, but it works still quite nice. Where we'll see a bigger difference is Firefox because that one 
just isn't as smooth. But with the mouse, all of them are absolutely nicely usable and with the trackpad kind of still, even though it's a little bit more on the wonky side. So the last thing to say here in terms of performance would be that you can do video rendering on that, but it's not quite as suited for that because you just don't have a discrete graphics from NVIDIA or ITI. And that's why I would stick, if you have something like with QuickSync, it should work. But since this is a business device, you should expect to do more business tasks. And for that it's super capable. It does throttle though, but I will get into that into the later part for the noise and heat. Now, in terms of performance, like I said, absolutely pleased, gets the job done. And with the i7 for a business device, actually almost a little bit of an overkill. Now, battery life, full charge takes about 2 hours and 30, but you have to think of one thing, this is a latitude device. So in the BIOS, we have settings that allow us to switch between four different charging modes, and then you can even charge it in less than two hours if you use the most aggressive one. But if you want to be a little bit more concerned about the battery, go for something a little bit smaller like me, or slower, like the adaptive charging. And then the battery life, if we check that, is actually quite decent because if we go into Edge, you can see some of my stats. I got a few odd values here, so just forget those. But we go from four hours to actually slightly above, almost three or five and a half hours, which in my opinion is quite decent, definitely better than the average. But the best ones that I had maybe reached like six, six and a half. So we are actually close to the very best ones i don't get weird high air values like nine or ten hours like some people do not even on the dell xps 13 so this is still a more than satisfying value for me now it's time to talk about the heat and noise and i will give you a small little noise test now okay this was the noise on its highest level. It doesn't really get any louder, but I also had to mention that it does throttle from about 2.8 to f for f or 3 gigahertz down to 1.6. So if you plan on video rendering on and exporting, it will definitely slow down. So keep that in mind, but the maximum temperatures are actually fine because here I would say is around the warmest place also on the back where at this point, for example, here I measured around about 50 degrees and I use this one. So it is actually quite accurate. And right now, as you can see, like 28, 29 degrees. And usually it's around 35, 36 to maybe 40 degrees. But if it really heats up for a longer period of time, maybe if these are blocked, it went to 50 degrees where typing on the lab could get a little bit hot, but that was under full load. And I don't think you will type and be under full load. So it should be absolutely fine. So I really like the heat. Absolutely still in a concerning way if you don't consider the frotting so much that I didn't run into Besides maybe doing some benchmarks, but therefore the noise is absolutely perfect because in idle and lower end tasks Absolutely silent and like I showed you in the demo even on highest noise Absolutely still fine in terms of software. We have Windows 10 not really any special thing about it. It was solid. It was stable. We had Windows Hello, as you have seen, with fingerprint reader that didn't work out so well. We have a little few enhancements like you see in the Dell Audio software. Other than that, a little bit of Dell, I would say, bloat, but all that is fine. So I'm done with the detailed part. So let's get into the conclusion. As you did see throughout the whole review, everything here is top-notch. The design and build, top-notch. Keyboard. Super great, maybe the trackpad not so much, but the display absolutely on highlight. Sound is very good, performance is very good for an ultrabook if you don't consider like gaming laptops and so on. Battery life is still way more than decent. Heat and noise absolutely fine. So you see all the qualities are super high end and I haven't seen them in such a high quality in one package yet because it is still super lightweight and really nicely done. There are maybe more powerful devices, but you have to see this as a business laptop. And then at least I didn't get to use any of that for now. And I'm pretty sure that if you want a business device that is durable, that is high performing on a very high level with very high qualities and not really any issues, then this one is definitely the one to go for. But there is one thing to keep in mind, and that is the price. I think this one in the this con test configuration is at around 2300 euros, which is a lot. You can definitely get a lot more power for less money 
maybe I will also review the lower end model, the 5000 series, because this is the 7000 series. Last year I actually preferred that one because in terms of value it was better, but I won't be able to get the full HD version. And here the Quad HD version for me is a big selling point. If you are okay with a matte 1080p display, this will satisfy you even more so because then the battery life will be better. Yeah, that's pretty much the biggest pro. Uh, benefit and maybe the performance should also be better which already is top notch but for me one of the main deal makers here is the display because i like to watch it a really great display since i look at the display the whole time and then 1080p matte just doesn't cut it for me of course it is expensive but if you are a businessman i guess you can get it for cheaper and so on but the qualities are top notch not really anything to complain if i would have to search for the weakest part it would be super hard because even those are on a high level like maybe the battery life that is still more than decent absolutely fine better than my macbook now which was a little bit better a while ago and maybe the sound isn't the very best one that doesn't need to be better so keep that in mind i think i've gave you all the pros and cons gave you all you need to know you can leave the questions or so down in the comments and if you have anything to say if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this other than that i wish you a nice day okay until next time bye